Morning, you lovely lot. This morning, you joined me at the mighty Southfield Reservoir, where just yesterday in the Feeder King qualifier, Mr. Steve Ringer pulled out number 32 and he went about his approach on this peg in his own way, which no one can argue with. In front of peg 32, there's some boys. There's five boys, which can make fishing a long line quite difficult, but when I have made an effort on here, it passed, a short line has been just as productive as any. I have got in my bag a rod that's clipped up at 35 metre, and it has been since I started fishing here, simply because 35 metre on here, for me, is a really versatile line to be on. I'm not fishing anything complicated either. Yesterday, after Steve had finished, he narrowly missed out on qualifying for the final. He came second in his zone, and it was a small skimmer in between them. Today I'm here to show you that that 35 metre line is still as productive as ever and I did comment on Steve's post yesterday saying um, attack it at 35 metre, plenty of fish there, I, it works well for me. Some, some at down them lines, I can't remember exactly what I said. In Mr Ringer's ride up after, he said that he settled on a swim at 32 metre. Now, different day, different conditions, however, I've tried to keep it as similar as possible. Really cold last night. It's warmed up quite quick this morning. Um, I mean, it's nearly 10 o'clock now, so I'm trying to keep it with sort of same match time frame as what the qualifier was yesterday. Um, but I'm going to go with a very simple approach. Maggots, ground bait. That's it. No worms. I've got a couple of pinkies in there, just in case things get difficult and small fish become my only option. And that's it. Really simple. I'm going to get it set up and I'm going to show you how I'm going to attack it. Right, so bait. Preparation, it's just like any other. However, unlike any other, this is unlike any other. So, Revolution Baits GG Green Ground Bait. Absolutely mega. Normally, a 50 50 this, we skimmer and bream dark or two to one it. Now, majority of venues I'm fishing, especially Southfield in particular, because it's quite shallow compared to a lot of places. There's a lot of colour in water, colours up nice and quickly starting to warm up so now fish are getting confident in feeding in a different color environment so there's no harm in not darkening things down anymore and just keeping a nice bright mix on the bottom and that is perfect for what i'm going to do today first thing you do is when you get to your peg you go onto revolution baits website you have a good flick through their catalog of baits pellets gloves clothing you name it everything's on there add it to your basket go through a simple checkout process and either choose whether you want to have it delivered or go pick it up really easy then what you want to do get to your peg get your ground bait and just like any other you just want to mix it up so pouring it in there straight there's nothing else in there i'm going to go with about that much and then just add your water as normal now a good thing about this revolution mix is that you don't need a lot of water for it yeah the water it takes on It'll keep it in a perfect consistency all through the session. And this mix, like the rest of them, they don't require lots of water and moisture for them to become a damp mix. And the other good thing is that by not putting a lot of water in, it also binds together really well, as you'd want it to, without putting that extra water in that you'd probably be used to putting in any other time. Nice tacky mix, works really well as a slop as well. And when you're fishing it through a window like I'm gonna to do today, it releases nice and easy on cast. So you know that even after waiting 10, 15, 20 minutes for a bite, if you're gonna retrieve and recast, you know that your bait is coming at that feeder absolutely spot on every time. And that is about how I want it, but it's not too wet. Nice fluffy mix already without even riddling it. And now what I want to do is, just like anything else, just chuck it through a riddle. So next to me I've got a 3 mil riddle, not a fine one. I'm going to bang it all on there, like so. Put my riddle on top. Just riddle it through. And you've got to remember as well that going through a bait up process when you get here or anywhere, especially when it's a big old place you want to make sure you do enough but don't just make too much up when you're fishing a one mix approach like this you can just do a bit at a time 
knowing that you can just get another bag out or the same bag and you're not having to mess about mixing it up with another another mix you can just put another straight mix into a bucket chuck some water in it in 10-15 minutes it's pretty much ready i mean always check it just to make sure it doesn't need anything else adding to it that is looking spot on give that a bang and there we go nice fluffy mix absolutely spot on for bream and skimmers and then what i do is fill up a tub a couple of big handfuls in there like that and the same again with my water just empty that out and put the remainder into another one and like you've seen on the other videos what i like to do then is i have two tubs on my side tray one i'll put my mix in like my loose offerings today it's only maggots but pellets casters etc and that'll be what i use to put my first initial sort of five cages out to bait up and that'll sit on my side tray and that's what i'll go in with initially at start of a session or a match that'll then go in unison with everything i'm putting out I'll keep another straight mix like this on my side tray with absolutely nothing in it. So if I need to make any adjustments to my feed, I can do. Add a few more maggots, put a bit more ground bait in it to sort of dilute it a bit. Or if it's absolutely no go, I need to start a new swim. I can just bait up with another mix of ground bait, which is exactly the same, just with less offerings in it. And then I've got my other one there waiting that's already made up with all my loose in it. So that's what you want. GG Green, really simple. Just going to leave that now. Probably got another 20 minutes till I start. And it'll just go through five casts in a rocket feeder with a few maggots in. And I'll go straight over the top uh, with a window feeder. But I'll talk you through that next anyway. But nice and simple. Go on the website, get some ordered. This stuff is mega. Don't go anywhere without it. Guys, clipping up. Couldn't be easier, but sometimes it's worth just double checking it just to make sure. And I'll show you how to count as well. So, if you've got a like a hollow distance feeder, for example, uh, without a, a weight on bottom, just one that's got a, a round weighted bottom on it, you can just slide it down your distance sticks. Distance sticks on market nowadays are pretty much same style, same diameter, same height, so you don't need to worry about anything affecting how you do it, but it does help just to shove a feeder down it. You also get some little EVA bits on them, on the Preston ones anyway, I don't know about many others. So if you're using it with your hook length on, which sometimes I like to do, but I'm always varying hook length, I'm only ever measuring the distance I'm feeding. The hook length can vary throughout the session, so I only ever clip up to my feeder. So what I want to do is just come down to one of my sticks and put your feeder, just round it, don't wrap it round, just put it round once, and that'll stop it from moving when you start going round your sticks. So what you want to do is just make sure you've got a nice loose line through your guides. A lot of people do it with bail arm open. I like to do it with a really loose clutch. It just keeps a bit of tension on it. Stops risk of getting any tangles unless you're good at it. Like I say, this rod sticks at 35 meters in my kit all the time, so I never have to really change it. So what I'm doing is I'm counting on the length. I'm not counting when I get there. Okay? It could confuse you counting. You could end up putting an extra two meters on, or extra having an extra, or having two meters less. So I always count. So that's two, four. Six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four, twenty-six, twenty-eight, thirty. 32, 34, and then 35. So I'm at my clip on the reel, won't go any further, no more line will come off, and I'm bang it middle of those sticks there, look. That's where I want to be. Another tip I'll give you as well is, which I should have told you before, is that wherever you start going round, always angle, it's hard for me to show you now, but if I'm coming round my sticks this way, and coming back this way on my rod, I'll angle this one, just pointing out a little bit, 
and that'll help hook it round. As I then come back this way with the tip of my rod, I'm going round this one. So I don't want to angle it sort of towards camera because my line could slip over it. I'll angle it a little bit towards me. And that means that each time it acts as a hook, oh, like that. And I can just come round it without getting tangled up. There we go. And it'll hook it there. If you have it pointing towards me, that like bending the distance stick, a bit of tension, it could just flop over it and I could be in a world of trouble. Last thing you want to do when you've got limited time, especially feeder fishing, measuring up, is getting in tangles and having to start again. And all you want to do is just tighten your clutch up or put your bail arm on, whichever way you prefer it, and then just keep an eye rod like that and just reel it all back off. And I won't do it this time, but you can even count it back as you do it, just to make sure that you have got the right distance. Because if you do have a crack off and you measure it up again, and let's say you got it wrong on first time, but you've measured it right on the second time, you could be sat there for another 45 minutes now without a bite. So always, always make sure you double check. And that is pretty much as simple as that gets. So I've got everything set up. That's me clipped up at 35. I'll get me swim fed and, uh, and then we'll chuck a five hour session on and go from there and see how we get on. Right, catch some fish. Right, so you're at that position now where everything's pretty much set up. Uh, your ground bait's done, you've got your loose feeds, your rod's ready for baiting up. Hook lengths, two feeder choices, um, both window feeders and they're both cage window feeders because on here, I just I don't need a slow release of bait. It's not a very deep venue, so I don't need to worry about holding my bait in a feeder right to the very bottom. I have got solids if it becomes an option if I need to, but don't really steer any further away than these. So two 30 gram cage windows um, and that's pretty much it. I've got some dead reds as well, just tied them off in a bag. Live maggots, some pinkies, just in case it gets difficult, and my two mixers. So like I said before, and every other time, I always fill two bowls up. And what I'll do is, I'll uh, just get just a sprinkling of maggots like that, and put them in, just onto the top layer like that. Don't need to worry about anything more than that. And I'll bait up with that. I'm not going to mix it in vigorously. I'll just use that top layer in that mix there, I'll put in five rockets of that, and then up length will go on, and I'll go straight over the top with a hook length. Um, I've got deads there as an option, just in case not having much look on much look on lives. But one thing I will say is on here, I tend to have more look on just live maggots. Deads don't really do it for me, so it's going against grain. You know, when you compare it to advice that I've been given, but you just stick to whatever works, don't you? So. That's my mix, nice and basic, nothing complicated at all. Really, I could have done with putting my tiny side tray on, tray on, to be fair. And that's it. One rod approach, baby distance master, uh, 3.8, intensity 720 reel, uh, 010 absolute braid. I'm using a uh, five square rocket to bait up with. Just going to punch five of them in. And, and that's it, really, really simple, nothing complicated whatsoever. So I am going to punch five of them out, chuck an up length on, and I'll call myself the all in at about quarter to its half past. So I'll wait till quarter two, I'll have a brew, and then we'll get stuck in. Right, so baiting up, couldn't be easier really. So let's turn there so you can see a little bit. But I've got my mix, I've just shown you, a few maggots in it. Nothing spectacular. So the main focus is just getting a base layer out there. And that's what this mix is for. So, reel up like that, undo my bail arm. Any long distance casting, um, always just make sure you've got a free line through your guide. Last thing you want to do is come back on a chuck and have it just a bit of a tangle. You don't want to be cracking off. You want to aim at where you're going, come back, give it a nice, punch that. Beautiful. So that is dead centre in front of my peg, that. Now I'm not going to move it. I've got two, I've got five boys in front of me, and then I've got two to my right hand side. Square on with me, I've got a pile on it, far background, and that's going to be my marker. What I don't want to do is cast out, I know I've been through this before, and just reel in and empty my feeder straight away, because through testing and doing it in a number of different tanks and really cramming it in and putting it in lightly 
it doesn't empty as quick as what you think. So I'll give it 15, 20 seconds like that. And all I want to do is pick my rod back up, just reel down so I've got a tight line, grab my spool, and then empty it. And that way I know I've got an empty feeder coming back every single time. That's exactly what I want. So, fill up again. So give me a mixed bit of a swirl, get some maggots towards the top. And just give it a punch in like that. Get a shake. And all you want to do is just repeat the process. So up, under your bail arm, make sure your line's free. Come back. And then get a chuck. So that one went off the right hand side a little bit. But that's what we're here for, baiting up. Then you do stray off to one side a little bit. All you need to do then is just try and amalgamate a centre line between them. I mean, to be fair, it only it was just off my marker, which from here isn't far, but out there could be the difference between six and seven metre away from where I'm fishing. So again, just leaving it nice and still, just waiting a good 15, 20 seconds just to make sure water's attacked that feeder and it's all starting to soften up and fall out. And that means that when I retrieve it, It'll just leave everything behind in a nice soft pile. So I'll wheel down like that and grab my spool, get a tug. That way I know, leaving that little bit extra, it's emptied it. So I'm going to put five of these in. Oh, by the way, quarter, quarter to ten mark, that's where I've gone with for the all in. So uh, we're now with the all in mark. So reel up, grab your line, make sure it's free, come back, get your marker, and here we've got a left to right wind on. Just need to make sure that I'm aiming off as well. That was perfect. Absolutely spot on that. So again, down on my rest, not tampering with it, just leaving it alone. I just want my feeder to be attacked by all that water now and just start to uh, start to soften up. It's worth waiting that little bit extra because you've got to remember the time you put your hook length on and then cast out, you're going to be even further past that anyway. Which feeding up back of your feed isn't always a bad thing because fish do back off from it. But you've got to remember fishing at distance, fish backing off from a feed area can be left, right, backwards, forwards. So you need to take that into account as well. So again, reel down to your feeder, get a tug, and reel it back in. So what we do now is I'm going to put two more of these in and then I'm going to chuck it out and see how long it takes for that first bite. Right, it is currently 9.51 in the morning. So I called the all in at quarter to ten just to try and keep it a similar time frame. What I've done is took my bait up feeder off, I've put a large 30 gram cage window on and all I've got is a 60 centimetre hook length because rules do state that your hook length has to hang 50 centimetres below the feeder. So I like to give that a little bit extra. And I've also got an adjustable helicopter rig as well. So I can even make it a little bit longer from my feeder as well. So nice and long. Any longer on here, don't really have much of an impact. Uh, sometimes going from a short to a long hook length can, uh, can help with fish. Oh, but single white maggot again complete opposite to everything I was told when I first started fishing up here it's double red or nothing and then just going straight into my mix I've not added anything else in there by the way just straight in minimal offerings simply because if I'm going to get a bite early on I want it to be because my hook bait is just one of only few loose offerings out there and then what I'll do is, when I know fish are feeding, or I start catching fish or getting regular bites, then I can start on for a few more loose offerings in my mix. But that's how I always attack it, 35 metre, in front of them boys. So I'm going to blast this one out. Like so, hit the clip. Beautiful. Straight down to my rest. There we go. And then I've got to start watch. So, I want to be... Starting that now, so not worrying about 
wait until my line's straight and everything's sank and doing all these magic tricks with my rod. I want to get it straight in, no messing about. Because it's fishing at that point. There's a bite. That on. That's on. Three minute nine. I think it's off. I think it's a line and I've lifted into the side at fish. Ah, that's a shame. Three minute nine seconds for that first bite. Wind's picked up a bit, so I just need to aim off to the left again. Beautiful. Straight down on my rest, no messing. There we go. Right, so I'll stop it now. Three minute fifty six. So three minute nine, three minute fifty six. I am now fishing again. So what I'm gonna do is reset it and put it back in. So nine off fifty six. So that forty seven seconds to get back in and back out. Obviously, if you're playing a fishing, it's going to be different. So it always fishes well up here when it's got quite a chop on. So uh, I don't mind this at all. Have another bite then. And that is fish on. Five minute, 49 seconds, that one. Bit of an head knocker. It's three minutes past 10. So just going up to four minutes past. So 14 minutes. Second bite. Hopefully first fish. Now I'm in no rush to get it in either. So I'm taking it nice and steady. Here's a good one. So taking it nice and steady. Just want to wait till he's got his head up. Oh, he's just there. A good fish. There we go. So I'm straight into the net for me, that one. Here's a result. Of getting your mix right, 35 meter on here every single time. That is what you are awarded with. Book is all the way down his mouth. There we are. Absolutely perfect start to a session. That. I'm going to chuck him in the net and get straight back out for another one. So double white maggot alive, not dead. I can even prove it to you. The, the wriggle and everything. And feed it and stir the mix up so we've got a couple of maggots available. All we do is just cram it into that window, really, really push it in. Like I've said before, I, I don't even mind if that comes back and it's still half full on a really early on a really early take. So reel up, make sure I've got snag free, come back, get my marker. Nice. There we go. Straight down on my rest, no messing. Get my real position where I want it. And then reset my stopwatch, start it now. Because that's when I'm fishing. My feed is now fishing. I've had bites up here this quick. So straight down to my rest. And again, this Revolution Baits GG Green. I fish it on loads of different venues. Works an absolute treat for bream and skimmers. I want to start testing it out on a few local venues. So I've got to try it up Southfield. Just got to do it. Say my uh, kids love the famous cup of tea bite. And granted, it doesn't work everywhere I go, but sometimes pouring a brew, you just get a wrap round. But can't see a brew anyway. Five minutes in exactly on that cast. Small indication then, right at last, minute, last second. 59, 60. So I'm coming straight back in, no messing. A good old punt. Hit the clip straight down to my rest. Don't worry about sinking my line or anything yet. We've got a nice chop on that'll help sink my line. Just keep that slack up. It's um measured distance me cast. So sorry, I completely forgot we're there, so if you trip I've got my wallet.
So between waiting for fish as well, what I like to do is every now and again, just split my time up into quarters. So if I'm waiting for like 20 minute bites, I'll have five minute, 10 minute, 15 minute, 20 minute and go from there. Small indication there. And then uh, there we go, 14 minutes 40. I was just about to tell you that I like to split it up into segments. And that in that five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, I'll then use it as like a graph as to how often I'm getting bites, what kind of bites I'm getting, and just use it as like a, a mental direction towards what I'm gaining from that swim. Because this tip is the only thing that's given me all the information I need about what's going off out there. But that's what I like to do anyway. And it does have a massive impact on where I go next. It just keeps it just keeps me constantly intact with what's going off in my swim. If I would sit here chatting with a mate all day, or I've got I don't know one of kids behind me on the bank, and I'm losing concentration, all I do I'll go home at the end of the day, and I've just caught nine fish, and that's how how it goes. Feels like a better fish. And here's a good one, and again, I'm not dragging him in, just guiding him up with weight at rod. Oh, lovely. Got to be one of the best rods ever produced by Preston, these distance masters. For all round fishing, another good fish. So again, probably another four pound him. Absolutely spot on, that's what we're after. Definitely dead reds today. So. I Remember rightly, I said at the start of the video that double white is definitely the bait to go for on here, and it is. But with every day being different and being my exact point as to why I'm here today, dead reds are obviously working a lot better. So I'll persevere on what I'm doing. So I'm going really low on this mix now, so I've only got a bit left in there. So what I'm going to do is a handful of mix, spray it in, a bit more, another good offering of maggots here to mix up and that should see me through now till end of the session because i've got 145 i've got an hour exactly so be nice and efficient with these next few casts and hopefully even if you can snare one more fish it'd be a bonus because what i've had so far is just mega so uh back on that line there we go perfect straight down on your rest there we go and then reset my stopwatch straight back in again so now i'm fishing straight away but ultimately just just waiting out for another bite really quickly see that one fish could be the first of many that's moved into your swim and took your up bait whilst you're then playing that fish in all the rest of the fish might just be getting comfortable with feed on everything that's out there so if you get back in nice and efficiently and get back over the top within, within just a couple of minutes You've got a good chance of then going probably one or two more fish out of that same shoal of bream. So I'll sit tight until I have one more brew. And hopefully between now and finish, I'll end up with a decent bag of bream. So well, that's 20 minutes. So I'm going to come in on that one. Stick it nice and steady. At this stage in a match or even a session when you're trying to get everything you can out of each cast, 
you want to make sure that you are on the ball with two fresh deads on you're on the ball with time scales and making sure that you're doing everything you can just to promote that one last bite from a fish two of them on so we get a mix up let's make sure there's plenty of maggots in that one this time and really cram it in so what i know now is i've got minimum two more casts before they all out whether one results in a fish or not a bit over to the left that i've got a really strong wind on now and trying to keep it on top of me swim it's quite difficult anyway but again like i said earlier how shallow it is a strong wind and a strong chop on like there is today anything that i feed 10 meters to my left of my swim it's probably going to make its way over to the right anyway so so just sit out and wait for another one and hopefully we can just get one more fish before we finish already i'm well over that 20 pound mark i know that for sure but wherever i can just try and just winkle one more out or even two it'll be a bonus right guys so i know we all like a happy ending in fishing uh, but unfortunately that is the all out and nothing to show for that last one so on a reel in it's been a cracking session say five hours really strict no earlier no before no pre-baiting on all in i told myself on all in that's when i'll bait up and i did so time is now quarter to three in the afternoon and i'm going to conclude my session by showing you what I've caught and I've not brought a sling so I'm gonna have to weigh my net but I'm gonna weigh my fish and see if we've beat ringer. I'm gonna zero my net. I'm gonna struggle going out fishing this I ain't brought my sling but I'll do my best. Ten ounce so if I zero that oh what's it doing? There we go. So zero pounds, zero ounce on there. I want to get my fish out and I want to weigh them. 26 ton. They're all bream. And that's what we want. There we go. An absolutely blinding day again up here today at Southfield Reservoir. I've come on peg 32 for one reason only. Our very own Steve Ringer drew this peg yesterday in a feeder king qualifier. Now, different conditions. Lots of people fishing yesterday, very pressured. And today I've come up here to fish at 35 meter, which is a proven distance to catch loads of fish from on here, using just ground bait and maggots. No chop worm, no red worms, no casters, nothing complicated. A really simple approach. And this is what you end up with every single time, pretty much. Now, I did say to Steve on his post, get at 35 meter and you'll catch fish from there because it's just short of the boys. I think Steve, he settled on a long line, did well. He ended up with 18 odd pound. Um, but he did say that he had a short line at 32. And three meter, it might not seem like a long distance, but when it comes to fishing for bream, it can be massive. He was in Revolution Baits, GG Green, just with maggots, nothing else, a couple of dead reds on hook, and that's it. Really simple side tray, really simple setup with a medium cage window feeder, a 30 gram, and a 60 centimetre hook length. And this is what a sort of fish you can end up with. Absolutely mega day. Remember to like and subscribe for a full range of all the Revolution baits. baits please go onto the website, have a browse, add it to your basket. And there's a simple checkout system that you can just have it either delivered to your house or you can go and pick it up. But thanks for watching. That's enough from me and these guys. Oh, he's ready. And we'll see you on the next one.